But now our job is different to act as the midwife, to act as the healer, to act as the tribal leader, to act as the wise woman, to act as the advisor, the wise grandma, right? What serves us so that we can serve at the survival of our tribe is that we go in, we distill our knowledge, and we offer it back. Is this why I'm smarter now? Tell yeah. me the truth. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to episode number 138 of the Game on Girlfriend podcast. Today, my guest is Dr. Kari Schaefer. And you guys, (laughs) I'm bringing her on because at my tender young age, I'm an old lady. All right. Okay. So I was super young and I've already gone through menopause and I'm really mad about it. And sometimes I talk about it and sometimes I'm too mad. I don't even want to talk about it, but it's happened. Right. And it's really confusing to me. I can just be honest about that. Like it makes me mad sometimes. So I was really excited to talk to Dr. Kari because she is so warm and you'll see how excited she is to talk about this and to share her wisdom. I mean, she has been a healthcare provider for over 22 years. Dr. Kari is also a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine, and she's the creator of the body stress analysis. And she's also the best selling author of a book entitled the food solution. She knows what she's talking about. And I think that you'll really feel that in this podcast episode. And also if you're going through this or you know someone who is, um, this is one of those episodes I hope you share. It's incredibly conversational. We just have a great time going back and forth. Um, And I really hope that you take a minute to understand this most important element of womanhood. And I love Dr. Kari's perspective on what's actually happening and how this is our moment as women to actually step into our own wisdom and become the wise woman. All right. So I hope you really enjoy this episode. Pop in those earphones and let's get to it. Oh my gosh, Kari. I'm so excited to have you. I'm so excited to be here. (laughs) You know, I think I feel like we've been friends since like, you know, we were 13 and that's not true, but I definitely feel that right? It's It's totally true, right? Totally. I know. I'm like, Marla, I just love her. (laughs) (laughs) I know. Well, listen, can I be honest? I'm so selfishly happy to have you on the podcast today because um, I'm very young, but things have changed for um, me and it's rude and I'm not always happy about it. And I really have some questions for you. And the first one is you say menopause doesn't happen to women. It happens for them. And I need to hear all about this because I got to tell you, it doesn't always feel that way. It feels like it's happening to you right now, right? It's rude. Yeah. Pretty rude. It can feel that way. So what, what to, to get people out of that experience, we got to orient them as to what's going on. So I'm going to start by telling you how I came to do this. Okay. So I went through my own rude (laughs) experience where one of my male practitioners, and I say male because I don't know if they're sensitive to this. Maybe I I don't know if all women would be or not, but practitioners, but sent me to one of those detox centers where you go and you're like doing enemas and think, can I say that? Yeah, Uh, you can say whatever you, if it's true, (laughs) we can say it woman. It's all good. Okay. Well, you're doing things, you're going, wheatgrass is going here and it's going down there and it's going over there and you're eating all raw food and you're sweating and you're working out and by day five, I couldn't read the clock on the wall. I was like, what does that mean? And I was like, okay, something's not right. And then I got on a plane and I had my first almost panic attack coming home. And then I developed a phobia of flying. And I was like, what the heck is going on? And I thought it was all because um, wheatgrass is, doesn't have gluten in it, but it, the the seed does. And then I was getting, I had a gluten cross reactivity and it was affecting my brain. I had this whole story. And then one day a client came into me and she was telling me about this experience of this claustrophobia thing that she was having and how she couldn't get in the backseat of a car and she couldn't go in the elevator. And I was like, you know, I'm kind of sitting there going, that sounds really familiar. And she goes, I Googled it and it can be perimenopause. And I was like, what? I was 47 and my periods were normal. Man, I just thought that this is, you know, I, I, I thought it, like I said, it was due to this other thing. And so I was like, okay, what's going on? Because I've been practicing medicine at that point for, you know, 18 years or something. And um, maybe, yeah, I was 54 when I stopped. So actually, no, 47. So I've been practicing for 
whatever, a long time. Long time, long time. uh, It's okay. Long time, long time, whatever it is, long time. You know, they talk about hot flashes and they talk about, you know, night sweats and they talk about being cranky and they talk, but none of this stuff, right? And so I went down a rabbit hole and um, I started getting on Facebook groups and women are there just talking about all these terrible experiences they're having. And I'm like, what is going on? And then I go to this training with this medical doctor who's training and specializes in hormones. And she's written a book on it. And she's like the, the functional person. Right. And I go and she stands in the room and she says, from a biological and anthropological perspective, women are done post-menopause. And I was like, what? That's so what are you talking about? And then she said, well, and then she said, so thereby the nicest thing we can do is keep everybody on bioidentical hormones until they're in their eighties and bleeding. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. There's something wrong here. Wow, what a person. Right? So oh really gosh. got me like, whoa, what's going on here? Right? Yeah. So my first, from a medical professional who I didn't recognize at 47, you don't really want to send a woman into a really drastic detox, especially with my medical history, to now this other you know, functional medicine person saying this. And then the, the gentleman who sa- invited her to speak reached out to me and said, Hey, she's coming back. Do you want to go? And I was like, no, I don't think Not so. Really. I really actually found what she was saying offensive. And wow. he goes, well, I can understand that in some species, uh, women die after giving birth. And I was like, in some species, women eat their mates after giving birth. Yeah, that's right. I was after just going to say that too. What does that have to do with being human, right? And so I was like, okay, people, we got this all wrong. And so really, you know, dove in, started to look at what was really happening. And the reason that this, to answer your question, so women have three major hormonal phases. We have the child years, right? Then estradiol comes online. And estradiol is a form of estrogen that makes us fertile, gives us our period, all of that. That happens. And everybody knows that that's a big transition, right? Everybody knows there's going to be some cranky, maybe. Everybody knows that, you know, that this, a, a, a woman's going through a big transition. Well, now we're going from being estradiol dominant and our body is going, okay, we aren't making babies anymore. This isn't what we're doing, we're right? Done we're done with that phase of our life. Yeah. We're starting a new phase of our life. So we need a new hormone. So estradiol goes bloop and estrone goes up. And from my experience of working with women, they are fundamentally different. Now, this was not some mistake <laughs> that you know the universe made. To me, it's a divine plan because there are superpowers that come with estradiol. You know them, multitasking, taking care of everybody else's needs other than our own. Heard of these, yes. Yes, right? Yes. yes. So if you think about it, if your job is to attract a mate, right, and procreate, right? That's your job biologically. Now we are talking biology. That's our job biologically. Okay. We're not, I know we're talking biology, <laughs> but I, it gets so un PC when you start right. talking biology, but that's our. That's our job during that time. We are actually hormonally, um, uh, like, um, kind of like charged, not driven, but our hormones that that make us like attractive, that make us attract mates, right? Yeah. Really, we are, because you'll notice if you haven't noticed, if this hasn't happened for you yet, there's a, a time when suddenly the opposite sex or the same sex, whatever your orientation is doesn't relate to exactly in the same way anymore. There's something shifts and you can look exactly the same and something shifts, right? We're not supposed to be attracting mates in the same way because that's not our biological job anymore, right? The species does not need us to do it at that point because- At that point, it doesn't make sense because we're not going to be around, right? We're not going to be around to make sure that offspring survives, which is also our biological job during that time. Hence the reason we focus on others. We want to keep our mate around so that they're, we're going back to like caveman days so that they're like feeding us, right? Yes. Keeping us safe. We got to keep, we got to do our hunting, gathering food thing. And we got to make sure our baby, our offspring survives, right? So we got to be focusing out here a lot, but now our job is different to act as the midwife, to act as the healer, to act as the tribal leader, to act as the wise woman, to act as the advisor, the wise grandma, right? What serves us so that we can serve the survival of our tribe is that we go in, 
we distill our knowledge and we offer it back. Is this why I'm smarter now? Tell yes. me the truth. <laughs> <It is. laughs> I, but I got to tell you, I do think I, I'm actually like what you're saying is kind of resonating a little bit because I feel like the deep seated, um, desire or drive. I felt, I think even for approval, which is part of that high functioning codependence I talk about all the time, but like that, well, but, 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 even the, but we everybody. need approval, right. We, yeah. during this time, because we need to be chosen and procreate, you know, like it all makes sense when you take it out of, uh, it, it can get out of balance. And that's right. what happens with women is they make everything about everybody else. And they forget to take care of themselves. That's out of balance. Mm. Right. Yeah, so sure. Yeah. The need for, for, for our tribe to approve of us is part of survi- a survival instinct, right? During that time. But later, we get our sacred no back. Because we don't. Say more have, things like that. Yeah. Because oh we, so so cool. we do not have to please a mate anymore. Mm. Mm. And so what starts happening is we start saying, hmm, eh. I don't think so. Mm, ah. I'm where I was working with a woman the other day who I've known for a long time and she's, she's right in it. Right. And she's like, you know, I've just decided I'm going to leave my mate and I'm going to go take a year and I'm going to go study with this woman that I want to study with. And that's just what I'm doing. <laughs> like, wow. I love it. I love right? it. So the sacred. No. Oh my gosh. I, why have I not heard that phrase before, but I think I might tattoo it to my forehead, but the sacred no is wonderful. And then looking at this idea that we're flipping sort of to this, the wise woman feel. And I mean, I was joking that, Oh, is this why I'm smarter now? Cause I also forget stuff more, but I think there is that, like, at least what I've noticed personally is, is a pull almost into like that self-trust. I talk about a lot too, but like that pull of like, actually, um, that's not going to work for me. And here's actually where I'm going to be focusing. And it's not quite, you know, a trip to go study for a year, but it's that idea that I actually have something of value. I'm very secure in that. Yes. Is exactly. that part of what we're sensing there? hundred percent. Okay. This is part of the change because we went from being outward focused mm. to meet our needs. Now to get our needs met, we, we go from in out, we meet them ourselves. And then we go out and decide how we want to share that, right? Okay. And so it's a really beautiful, powerful, creative time for women. That's why, you know, women start volunteering a lot of times or they start doing art all of a sudden or they start because we don't have to spend all that energy we were spending on the outside, making sure everybody's taken care of because biologically, that's what we were actually driven to do. Now it's our kids get to take care of themselves. Now it gets tricky because we're having babies so much later. So right. when you've got a woman in this transition who had a baby at 42 and is now in it because the other thing that happens is we be, be very graciously become less kid centered. doesn't mean right. we love our kids any less. It's right. just that the idea of making them lunch every day becomes less appeal. Like we're like, yeah, whatever. My girlfriend, another one, you know, called me up and she's like, God, God, you're so right. Like, I just don't want to make lunch anymore. I said, good, help, have him help you. Right. You know, like, let's absolutely, kids, you know, yes. And, and bedtime, like we don't, you know, we don't aren't like before where bedtime is like the best thing. Totally. Now we're kind of like, oh, yeah, let's go do it. Right. You guys but, got this right. Yeah. It kind of flips over to that. Yeah. But I think right. Yeah. You can kind of do this. Right. But it doesn't, it doesn't have to be bad. Look, I, I tell mommies like, look, you got a three-year-old, you got to put in bed still, but don't judge yourself if you're not getting as excited about it as you used to. That's actually hormonally. Like for me, I wanted children up until I was 42. I left my, my the relationship I was in because he didn't. And it became very clear that it wasn't happening. And, and by 44, that had shut off. Thank God. Right. Because if, if we stayed in that desire for kids, when we're past the transition, that would not be kind. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that shuts off women. And so it, it and then uh, this need to find a mate changes as well. You'll meet a lot. They, women might still whatever, but it's not the same you, drive. It, the drive really does change. It really is. It's fascinating. I met my husband at 45 and I kind of was like, ah, 
you know, it's whatever. And then I met him and I was like, oh, yeah, (laughs) that's really interesting. No, I've seen that in girlfriends of mine who've gone through divorce or who never married. They're like, what if at this point it's like, I'm good. Um, But it is interesting that drive because I remember, and also I think part of this is generational too, when we were raised, what we saw, what we were expected to, to do in life, I think is a little bit different for this next generation coming up. But I remember really being obsessed with that in, in, or 20, I mean, Sex in the City. That's what that entire show was about. Was like, where is he? Where's my man? Drive, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So interesting. And that is changing. My stepdaughter, like it's a it's a whole, I'm watching, it's a whole different game. And my stepson, who's even eight years younger than her, is like, what? You know, what, what up? You know, like it's just they're, they're just getting people are getting much more easy about all of it. But there it definitely was, but there is that biological thing, and it does it can turn off. And if it doesn't for somebody, usually that's because there's an emotional piece to that, that hasn't turned off, but biologically the body just is like, okay, I'm done. Right. Now I have a a client who had a baby at 49 naturally didn't want to have a baby. Wow. So she's now in the change and she's like, is it post is it postpartum or is it i'm like oh yeah oh yeah it's it's, it's all a of lot it. of hormones going it's on all of it. <laughs> wow that's incredible Isn't wow incredible? what a story yeah, yeah. oh uh, as someone who's gone through that like wow so many yeah. so many hormones at once yeah. um okay so i can see sort of you know there there seems to be some sort of biological wisdom to this like this makes sense and if that's the case why is it so annoying? Like I call it the cray cray years, <laughs> crazy, crazy years. <laughs> yeah. But when I was pregnant, I could at least say I'm growing a freaking human right now. So I'm going to be nice to myself. Like it would be like, you know, when I was annoyed or what I was like, I grew a spleen today. What'd you do? Right? Like <laughs> it was like, I was doing something, even though I wasn't in charge of it necessarily, right. but I could get that. And with the changes I felt physically here, I'm just annoyed because I don't know why it has to be hard. So I think that's the question is like, it is cray cray. I'm like, you know, the not sleeping, the hot flashes, all those things that tend to come with us. It's like, but, but why, why is it so hard? So it doesn't have to be, and it isn't for all women. There's a high number of women in the, the, uh, you know, Western world that do struggle in the Eastern cultures, they had very low incidence of like, like 15% where we're at like 70 of like hot flashes and things like that. That is changing as they're moving more to a Western hmm. Westernized lifestyle. Hmm. Give, give you any clues. So why when you are estradiol is made by your ovaries. Okay. Ovaries decline and they stop working the production of estrogen gets taken over by two things, your adrenals and your fat. So how many women are stressed out or have been living stressed out for years? 99.999%. Yeah. That's why, because when we have low hormone, our adrenals also make progesterone and they also make testosterone. So when we have low testosterone and progesterone levels, when we are during the fertility years, most likely we're too stressed out. Um, but when we have it in our postmenopausal years, we're definitely too stressed out because the body's always prioritizing towards survival. That's what stress hormones are for. They are to keep you alive. And if there is something that feels threatening to you, that is more threatening than a, um, you know, then whether or not you have enough estrogen, (laughs) the body is going to prioritize that immediate threat. That's where your resources are going to go. And they're going to go away from making estrogen. Now, the problem is, and testosterone and progesterone, the problem is, is when we're low in estrogen, our body says, we need more estrogen because it increases inflammation, it creates brain fog, all of that. Um, But our body also says, I better make more fat. So I can make more estrogen. Oh my God. That's fascinating. Okay. So we have the drop in estrogen, which gives us brain fog, Mm -hmm. right? It causes inflammation. So then the body says, sure, no problem. You're hungry. Go ahead. (laughs) Right. Is that basically what happens? (laughs) I don't know if it says you're hungry, you'll eat, but it does say we need more fat to make more estrogen. Yeah. And so belly fat, right? More belly fat. So five pounds pre and post normal beyond Mm -hmm. that 
Um, especially if you were a, a thin woman, that you know, that extra weight is needed. The body needs it to make you need more body fat to make more uh, hormones. But post, uh, but beyond that, that's imbalance. And so I'm going to give you the quick hit on. I taught a, a week long seminar on this, so the quick hit, and then there's the audio that we'll talk about. The quick hit of it, so you can have hormones out of balance. You can either have too much estrogen or not enough. Both will cause weight gain. You can have a uh, too much estrogen in relationship to progesterone, that also can throw you off. You can, your thyroid can be under converting. That's another major one. I see this all the time. And when you're on hormone replacement, estrogen blocks that conversion. So that can make it worse. Um, you can't, you, we need less calories now than we used to. And we can just be consuming. That was mine. I was putting on weight, putting on weight. I couldn't figure it out. First, I had an undercurrenting thyroid. Then I had something else. And then I had, um, and then I realized my morning smoothie had 700 calories in it and it was all good stuff. So there's a lot of different factors that can go into why we gain weight at this time. Um, I, I, I'm joking. My husband and I were joking the other day. I'm going to do a, a, a course called menopause midriff um, um, magic, you know, something to, to deal with the menopause midriff. Cause you can just it see, it. see a woman and you're like, mm, she's I mean, in menopause. I have always had a very flat stomach my entire life. I do not right now. And it's very annoying, right? I'm just like, what, excuse me, please. Um, and so the question- remember that five pounds of that is expected. Okay. What's about right. Yeah. yeah but it's still annoying. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. I know. I know. It's rude. As you go through the change further, you, one of the other thing that happens is we stop needing to be a certain way anymore. And we get a lot more self-tolerant and accepting. It's really fascinating to watch it happen. So, you know, I think that's right. I think that's right. And well, but one of the things I was trying to ask you that I'm not do, asking well, because for some reason my brain can't wrap itself around this question, but I heard Chrissy Brinkley, and if you don't know who that is, you guys are. Too I did. I used not to, you, I, Car. I know uh, you would know. I'm talking about. I just want to like Chrissy Brinkley. I know who Christy is. Yeah, Love that woman. <laughs> but I heard her once say, "As you age, you have to eat less and exercise more to stay the same." And I knew she was telling the truth. I could just feel it. I was like, "Oh, that just hit me." And I was like in my early twenties. And I think what I wanted to ask you is as we do age and we do need fewer calories, how many fewer calories do we need per day as opposed to when we were in our twenties and thirties? What totally happens there? Is it like 500? Totally is it two? Is it? I can't tell you. It totally okay. is a individual thing because we also get a lot more sedentary. I used to be much more active than sure. I am now. I work hard to be active, but I used to be much more active than I, and that's why we need less calories. We're just okay. not using much. Like, I think I used to burn calories when I was a, a kid. I was one of those kids that like my leg, I would do this all the time. You know, <laughs> I'd sit in class and I'd be like, mm, I should burn up calories, you know? Right. So I think we also calm down, mm-hmm. you know, in some ways. Um, and, and all of that ha- can have an effect on our calories. Now, ladies, I'm not saying you need to be stressed out to lose weight. That is not what I'm saying. Um, actually at this age, that doesn't work. It makes it worse as I've already told you. So it, it, it's all very individual, but the first thing to check is I, I just use one of those like free apps. Then look at the amount of calories you would need in a day to stay the same way and then just track and see what you're doing. It's amazing. A lot of what happens, Sarah, and I'm seeing this everywhere is the keto craze. Yeah, I know. So the keto craze is a, where everybody ate high fat and oh, high I know. protein, right? And then to be in ketosis is a thing. And it's not actually that easy for many people to be in ketosis. If you're in ketosis, calories don't matter so much anymore. But if you're not in ketosis, calories matter a lot. So people go out of ketosis, but now their new dietary habits are to be eating that almond butter and eating the, you know, and and eating the butter and whatever. And you're just getting way too many calories. Look at, I'm not big on like spending your life counting calories that can get get cray cray in itself. I'm not into that, but I do like education Mm -hmm. and I like people to be aware because you can really feel like you're at the effect of it. Like now I know it's sneaking up. I know what I'm doing. I'm just eating more than I need. Right. Right. My husband. Yeah. My husband loves to make me a matcha latte, something chai rooibos frothy drink in the morning. And he loves to use his creamer. That has all got all that little cane sugar in it. And he just loves it. Right. That's got to go, sweetie. You know, like, yeah, I just, I know. 
I just know it's happening. And so that's empowering, much more empowering than before when I was like, what is going on? Why am I gaining right. weight? All I'm drinking right. is smoothies and eating salads. Salads can be, it's, it's incredible how many calories can be in a salad. I'm laughing because I took my kids to the Cheesecake Factory the other day. I don't know why we were there, but we were there and I was trying to pick a salad. I love salmon. It's the one fish I eat. I try to be as vegan as possible, but I really love salmon. And um, anyway, so I'm looking at the salmon salad and I just burst out laughing. One was 2,200 calories. One was 1,800 calories. One was 2,800 calories. I'm like, what just happened? I was like, how, and I was like, if I take the dressing off, I'm like, that can't be all it is. My, and my yeah. weight loss daily calorie intake is yeah. like 1350 calories. I would mm. eat that salad and I'm done eating, and I'm done. I'd be eating. Yeah. And I'm thinking I'm dieting. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. So I'm not having a, you know, I'm not having the thing I really want. I'm having a salad. Look how good I'm being. You, you know, a, a, a uh, Starbucks drink can have yeah. like 2000 calories in it. I know right? people don't need the other day that food. Yeah. Yeah. The other day we went out with my stepson who for years I was sort of bane of his existence. Cause I was trying to bring healthy food in, you know, um, I did write a book on food, you know, I have to kind of do that. And, and, and he resisted. So he lives with his mom. So he, he came to visit and um, he's 16 now. And my husband, we were at this, you know, kind of fancy, like sandwichy salad place. And my husband went in and bought him an organic lemonade in a jar, glass jar, right? And set it down. And my stepson comes out of the bathroom. And he sits down and he picks it up and he goes, dad, I can't drink this. There's 70 grams of sugar in there. Oh my gosh. 70 grams of sugar is 17 sugar packs. It's a lot of sugar. 17 sugar packs. And that's in an organic lemonade. The other day, my husband and I were somewhere mm. else and they had their organic lemonade. We picked up 40 grams of sugar. Wow. So we're drinking these drinks thinking that they're good for us. Right. And I mean, that's and like I said, and we don't even count it as food, right? Like we don't think of that as a caloric intake. So, so what I'm hearing is really a comprehensive understanding that the body will ask you, it'll say you're hungry, right? Go eat the extra calories. Cause we need about five pounds of fat to help us with the, the change in the hormones. Um, and then beyond that it's math. I always say that to people. People are like, no, I got to do this diet or that. I'm like, it's math. So that we look at like what the, what the calorie needs actually are, what we're eating, but then how do we figure out like actually how to get the body back into balance? You mentioned a lot of yeah, hormones, right? If this one's too right. high or so, too low, it's a problem. Or this yeah. one or this one, is it blood work? Is it like, what do we need to do? Several different things. So on panel for women is something called the Dutch panel. And the reason for that is it does, it looks not the hormones themselves, but it looks at the metabolites of the hormones. So what you're, what you're processing. And the reason that's really helpful for us is that it looks at how you're processing your hormones, because you can turn estrogen as you, as you break it down into something that's we, what we call proliferative. In other words, that makes you gain weight, makes you have fibrocystic breasts, makes fibroids grow, you know, could even possibly play a role in the in development of cancer, right? So we don't want too much of that happening. So we want to know that because if a woman is going to go on hormones, if that's the choice they make, we've got to know if that pathway is clear, because if not, then they can be more dangerous. Does that make sense? Interesting. Yep. Okay. So we have to understand the individual and yep. you're saying the Dutch panel the Dutch blood, panel blood work mm -hmm. really helps us figure stuff out. Like no, that is a salivary urine. And it Dutch the oh, Dutch okay. plus panel does the adrenals and the hormones together. And it looks at melatonin if, if you get the insomnia piece added in. And why I love this panel is A, we get hormones, we get adrenals, which I've already told you why they're so important. And we look at all the various factors that affect sleep. So is it a progesterone issue? Is it a melatonin issue? Is it a liver pathway issue? Is it a, um, is it a estrogen issue? You know, we get to see all the factors. Is it a cortisol issue that could play a role in why someone's sleep is off? And then we really targetedly can support them to get their sleep back on. That was a big one for me. I mean, that took forever. That was so awful of just not sleeping. I remember going out to dinner with someone. Actually, it was I think there were five of us, five women. And I said something like, good grief. I haven't slept through the night. I can't even remember the last time she goes, 
oh, please, I haven't slept through the night in seven years. And I was like, this can't be okay. Like, we can't just be like, this is the way it is now. I'm like, we had the kids. We already didn't sleep through the night. Right, right, right. Why are we doing it now? Yeah. <laughs> like, come on, man. This can't be right. Yeah. So it's not whether or not we're waking up. It's whether or not how long we're staying awake. So if we wake up and fall back asleep, totally normal. If we're waking up and we're awake, now that's the pattern that we need to work on. So first thing, because they, they find, if you talk to sleep experts, they find that, that the psychology of I shouldn't be awake, I shouldn't be awake creates the, the hormones, that the steroid hormones that then, you know, jack us up that then help us not sleep, you know? So we've got to normalize, oh, I, I'm aware that I'm awake, which we are doing several times in the night and we're just not aware of it. And now let me just drop back in under underneath back to sleep. Um, normalizing it will help people get back into a normal pattern. That's one thing. However, got to look at progesterone, got to look at estrogen, got to look at cortisol, got to look at melatonin, and got to look at the, that liver pathway because a gunked up liver, what time do people wake up? Usually one and three in the morning. That's liver time, you know? So. Oh, good to know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh God, that's fascinating stuff. Yeah. All right. So, but there's all the, listen, the great news is there's so much information. There's so much knowledge that's out there for us to be able to tap into yeah. um, and sort of explore. And I think part of that is you actually have an audio file for our listeners. Yeah. Do I have that? I right do. Here? I have a, yeah. an hour that's audio that will talk them through the weight piece because that's the biggest pain point, right? Um, is that weight piece for, for women. We, we feel like um, we don't recognize ourselves. We feel like we're not going to be loved, we're, you know, all of that. Um, and so I, 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 that, I offer that to women just to help surgery or Orient them in the world of what's going on um, to, to, to just give them a, a direction to start to head. The, uh, the link will be under this video or in the show notes if you're listening, because um, I think that's really important. We need to remember that resources like this are out there. And I, what I love so much about your work is that we're demystifying all this garbage, right? Like this idea that we're not supposed to talk about it. Women are supposed to disappear once this happens, right? All these things we hear. And you know, I was so young. I mean, I'm still mad, right? I was, it was like, I was 43. It was 2000. Yeah. I mean, I was 43 yeah. and I went to the doctor and I'm like, I'm going through menopause. She said, there's no way. And I was like, take the blood lady. And she came, she's like, oh my God. I was like, right. I'm wow. not crazy. It was really wow. young. And it was really upsetting because yeah. I know what happens, right? The belly fat, the, the loss sure. of the beautiful skin, all the things. And I was yeah. like heart disease, right? So I'm so grateful to you for the work that you do and helping us just like, let's demystify this. Let's talk about it and let's understand what we, what levers we can pull, right? Like what is the control that we have? Yeah. If we're out of balance, you know, it's really important ladies to know that if you're out of balance, it's called perimenopausal syndrome. And I, they, the, the medical technical term is that perimenopausal perimenopause ends when you cease menstruating for a year and then you're in postmenopause, right? But I find women who are still having the transition bumpiness, you know, 10 years into menopause. So to me, that perimenopausal transition is really over when we have settled into this new role of who we are, right? Not that we're not going to keep growing. We're always going to keep growing, but we've settled in and we're not in the crazy, crazy body. And we understand if we start getting symptomatic, oh, let me clean this up. Let me get back on track. Let me do this, right? Because that's the other thing people misunderstand. They think that if you either have perimenopausal syndrome or you don't, you could not have it, not have it. You can be in menopause and you can throw yourself off because remember, it's the adrenals that play the role, the major role in the production of the new form of estrogen that's dominant. So that can go low at any time if we're in a particularly stressed out, crazy time and we stop taking care of ourselves, right? Okay, so self-care really is a big piece of this it and actually is. learning how to stay calm, even amidst all the stressful situations, because this is not an unstressful time to be alive. So like, yeah. do you have a favorite tip or something you'd want to share with us what we can do in those stressful moments to help us so out? The, the two things, my two biggest things are blood sugar regulation. I talk about it a little bit in my book, but you have got to learn how to eat in a way that doesn't spike your uh, cortisol super important. We are such meal skippers. And then when we start to gain weight, we think meal skipping is the answer. And it is not, it just makes the whole pattern worse. 
And then, um, so intermittent fasting during this time of life, yeah, no, no, I just had my first, cause I've been suspecting this, but I just had my first hardcore intermittent faster and got to see what it's done to her adrenals. And I was like, see, I knew it. I knew that this was not good. Yeah. And so intermittent fasting is not recommended. And then the other thing that's super important is a daily practice. You gotta sit your booty down. You gotta close your eyes. And you got to calm down your nervous system. 10 minutes a day of breathing, 15 minutes of 15 minutes of breathing is better for hot flashes than hormones. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. I'm trying this, by the way. Yeah. So but we've got to create in our life that time and space for us to go within and listen to the wisdom. To be able to step into our new role, there's got to be space. We've got to let our nervous system calm down because you, you, there can be times during this where you literally feel like your nervous system is like, yeah, you got to create a, a daily practice of calming that down. Now, if you're so wound up that you can't sit quietly and breathe, that's going to make you nuts. And that keeps us out of here and, and calming that body. And then at the end, you could sit for three minutes, but daily practice essential. It is, it, it is what is needed for you to really embrace this next role. And it's what your nervous system needs to calm itself down. Mm, I love that. It re- we really do have a lot of these internal tools, right? Like we have the wisdom inside of us. We just don't always use it. We and just don't do it. Do it. the phase of life, we start to tune in more to that wisdom, right? And really support ourselves through this process. Well, and gathering as women. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Gathering. Yes. Women. I've got a, there's, a, there's a retreat. I'm part of this coming up in two weeks. If you're, if you, uh, love it. If you, you want to go um, anyway, but gathering with women is also yeah. so important. There's so, there's so few places for that. The old, the idea of the red tent, but this is like after the red tent, you know, um, but gathering with other women and really having a place where it's okay to talk about stuff. Yeah, it's making it okay. I think it's such a big deal. I'm I'm still back on your original story of the woman who was like, well, this is wrong. So we're just going to pretend it's not happening. Otherwise, we just shouldn't be here. And, and that feeling that that has just been such a driving narrative for so long. It's so great to start to break that apart a little bit and really um, tell the truth about it and then be there for each other. I love exactly. This. I love yeah. That. To really normalize it, that this is, yeah. that's why this is happening for you ladies, not to you, even though it feels like it is, if you're having troubles, my mom went through the change, just woke up one day and no period and on she went. Stop it. it was that yeah. easy. That was it. Just the end. Wowzers. I'm a little bit jealous. I got to say. Yeah, not my experience, right? And I have a long health history. Anybody who's heard me talk knows I've had a long health history. So my adrenals have been working for a long time. And and so, you know, hence why when I was sent to a, a situation that, you know, sent me into even more stress, my body went completely crazy. And I went, you know, I started having all that mental stuff, which by the way, I have none of anymore. It's amazing. That's amazing. It just shows us how powerful our bodies are. You know, my daughter was recently diagnosed with type one diabetes and I have, I've told my children for years, you know, anytime we talk about mental illness or cholesterol, even like pick a thing. I always said, you know, our bodies are big bags of chemicals. And when one of those chemicals is off, things go nuts. And they were like, yeah, mom, whatever. Right. And then she got diagnosed with this and she felt, I mean, we had a really tough time before she was diagnosed. We really couldn't figure out what this was. It was horrible. And Once she got insulin, we were in the hospital. It was amazing. She actually sat up and she goes, I remember feeling like this. Oh, wow. I was like, is that extraordinary? I said, remember I told you we're big bags of chemicals. She goes, mom, I didn't believe you. I said, I know, I know, but look, is it amazing? And what I love about what this is experience has taught our entire family, but also specifically her as, as a young girl, right? Is that when these things happen, it's no one's fault. And our job is simply to do what we need to do to work with doctors, to work with our own wisdom, to work with our bodies, to to support the body in getting back to that homeostasis and to finding that balance again. So it's been a really powerful time for us. Yeah, it it really is important that people understand, even if you've made choices in your past that maybe aren't supportive of you now, it's still not your fault. You were doing the best you did with the information that you had. Our food system has been so altered that... 
to get really good quality food is, is, is actually a chore these days. And food is the foundation for everything, right? And expensive, right? Um, it's the foundation for everything. So it's, um, it, you know, I always tell people the blame is not helpful. It's not going to get you anywhere. It's like, okay, I'm here. Let me look at what I did that helped get me here, but now let me make different choices. So I get somewhere else. It's rare that somebody is doing something intentionally to harm themselves. Right. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. The norm. And so you didn't know, you didn't know that the, whatever's you were eating or whatever in type one diabetes, very often there's some virus or something that can have thrown, have caused that to happen. Right. So yeah. They were telling us that, but yeah, it is amazing. And, and very rarely is it completely our fault, but that isn't even the point, right? It's really about moving forward. Like you said, I think that's such wonderful advice. And I love too, with your work is, is the gentleness that comes with it and the compassion that comes with it. And I just say cheers to you. Like, thank you so much for what you do and, and for coming on today. It's just been such a joy to have you. Yeah. I'm going to, can I say one last thing because please do. Okay. And then I want you to share with everybody where they can find you as well, okay. but let's, let's go. So, so um, it's really important that women understand. I work with something called outdated survival program. Some people call it like our inner child work or whatever. It's, it's identifying the programs in our system that were written as children that are still sort of affecting how we respond to life. And everybody, I think knows what I'm talking about. You know, you have that thing that you can't not react that way to, even though you know better, right? Cause it's, it's chemicals that are getting released. Anyway, during this time, as our hormones get thin, those come up more and more and more. But again, what I'm going to say, Sarah, is I think if you look at the divine plan, that's perfect because for us to get to the wisdom, we have to stop running from that place and we have to start moving into a different part of our psyche that's running the ship. And so it's it's teaching ourselves to lovingly support those parts that are having trouble without letting them drive our car anymore is a big part of this. Uh, the car of our life is a big part of this time for women. And so that's why I think so many of the emotional stuff comes up as well, because it, again, for us, it's helping us to be like, okay, it's time that I, I, I work with this and move through it so that I can not have it consume my life anymore in the way that it has in the past. Yeah. I agree with you completely. I do the same type of work with money and it is important for us to understand these things. These programs got put in so young. I love that. I love that. Well, you guys, we're going to link to Dr. Kari's website for sure. But can you also um, tell so, us where- So can I have a, a, a Facebook group I know Facebook is the bad word right now. I do know it. <laughs> yeah, most people, it's funny because people are like, oh, I don't do Facebook on Instagram, but they're owned by the same people. Anyway, um, but it's it's the only place that exists at this in at this time that I know of where we can gather in that way. And what this is for is for women to come on. There's videos on there, there's um information. I go live, I bring in experts who can come in and and just help give give help rather than just a place. A lot of the, the the groups that I found were just places where women went in and they talked about their problems and their suffering. And it broke my heart because nobody was saying, hey. And so it's designed because I'll literally, you write in there, hey, this is what's going on. I'll write back and say, hey, this tr go try this or this is what you need to do, right? So it's called Menopause Wise Woman Emerging because I believe we are stepping into our wise woman. And um, I would love to have people there. And yes, you can go to my website and check me out. And I'm happy I'm here to support women and whatever they need during this time. That's what I do. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. A woman after my own heart. So you guys absolutely understand why, why she's on the podcast right now. <laughs> I love it. That, and I'm totally selfish and wanted to pick your brain about all these amazing things, but it has been such a joy to have you here today. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you so much. And I'll see you soon.